good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Geraznik Mikhailian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia. Baku wants to discuss only integration, no other topics, Artsakh president says. Baku forbids the transfer of bodies of two soldiers killed in Artsakh to Armenia, ombudsman. Artsakh villages' arable lands are under Azerbaijani combat positions target. The Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sport of Armenia held meetings with the Deputy Director General of UNESCO. The Repatriation and Integration Center is already operating. What problems will it solve? Gehaznik Mikhailian was born on November 16, 1951 in the village of Lernarod, Ashtarak region, Aragatotum province. He completed his education at the local high school and later received specialized secondary education in agriculture. He became the commander of the Yegrapa Ashtarak volunteer detachment and showcased bravery and skill in handling military equipment. From the initial days of the Artsakh Liberation War, he actively participated in the self-defense battles of Goris, Kornizor, Mehri, Novad. Noyemberian was Kepar, Ijevan, and Ararat Yeras. Tragically, Gehaznik Mikhailian lost his life on August 29, 1990, in Yerevan. He was laid to rest in the village of Sasunik in the Ashtarak region. On September 20, 1996, he was posthumously awarded the title of National Hero of the Republic of Armenia. He was also honored with the Order of the Fatherland. According to legend, Geram's grandson Aram found himself in a battle against the mighty Assyrian king Nebuchadnezzar and was unexpectedly captured by him. Nebuchadnezzar commands Aram to abstain from eating from 10 days and on the 11th day they are to engage in combat. The king promises to realize Aram if he emerges victorious. After contemplating throughout the entire night, Aram requests Nebuchadnezzar to bring him the shield of the Armenian troops. The king agrees and sends an envoy to the Armenian army army. Understanding their king's intentions, the Armenian troops place a lavash, traditional Armenian bread, inside the shield. However, the envoys are unaware that bread can be concealed under the shield. When the shield is delivered to Aram, he declares that the shield is not suitable and requests another one. Consequently, for 10 days, the messengers bring Aram one shield and one lavash each time. On the 11th day, Aram and Nebuchadnezzar engage in a duel. The Assyrian king is confident that Aram will be weakened after the 10 days period of fasting and expects an easy victory. However, Aram managed to defeat Nebuchadnezzar and safely returns to his homeland. Upon Aram's return, the king orders that all varieties of bread in Armenia be transformed into lavash. The final sitting of the 7th session of the 7th Convocation Artsakh National Assembly was convened Thursday. The first item on the agenda was the report on the progress and the results of the Artsakh President's 2022 Activity Program and the 2023 Activity Program. President Arai Karutsunyan answered many questions of the MPs and which were related to the aforesaid program, the situation in Artsakh, the provocations of Baku and the negotiations process. CivilNet was in attendance to this sitting and noted the most important thoughts expressed during the question and answer session between the Artsakh MPs and the President. In particular, the President stated why Artsakh should not accept Azerbaijan's proposal and go to its capital Baku to negotiate. Because Baku is discussing one topic with us integration, it is not discussing a second topic. They say from various places. Let's go, convince. I have tried, friends. I have tried for two years. If anyone thinks that I was a bad negotiator, I did not negotiate. I did not go at the last phase. Those negotiations do not give results because at the end they come say this is our goal. Harutsunyan said they do not tell only to us, they are telling that agenda at the UN. They are telling yesterday and today during the Blinken Mirzoyan Bayramov meeting. Azerbaijan tells us first point to disband the Artsakh Defense Army. We will disband, then go to the meeting. Let me say the sequence. You go announce you have disbanded the army, you dissolve the Artsakh public administration system. They hardly create a mechanism for community elections. After which they will give the gas, give the electricity and let come and go on the road. The Artsakh president noted, and it is clear how they will live, the people of Artsakh as a citizen of Azerbaijan. I am not against negotiations. I am not against meetings. I was the most engaged and conducted the most meetings. We shall realize that we will have problems. All of that is surmountable. People, we have two things to do, self-defense and increasing endurance. What have we done and what will we do in that regard? If there will be a wish, we will discuss separately, Arai Karutsunyan said. 
After the recent provocation by the enemy along the line of contact, Baku has prohibited the transportation of the bodies of two deceased Armenian soldiers. In an interview with the radio station Azatutyun, the Artsakh human rights defender stated that one of the soldiers, 20 years old Samvel Torosyan, was a resident of Stepanagert and his family wished to bury him in the military pantheon Yerabulur. The family of the other martyr, 20 years old Yervan Tadevosyan, who was originally from Kashatakh, currently resides in the Republic of Armenia after the war. The Artsakh Ombudsman dismissed the Azerbaijani sites, claims that the two fallen soldiers served in the armed forces of the Republic of Armenia, labeling it is another manipulation. Geram Stepanian stated that the Artsakh side is seeking to resolve the issue through the mediation of Russian peacekeepers in order to transfer the bodies to the Republic of Armenia. Stepanakert has also reached out the International Committee of the Red Cross to coordinate the transportation of the bodies. It is worth mentioning that around 1.30 on June 28, units of the armed forces of the Baku authorities employing drones once again initiated artillery fire on Armenian positions in Martunia and Martagert. The Armenian side suffered four casualties. Most of the arable lands in the Nor Ghazanchi village of the Martakert region of Artsakh has remained uncultivated due to security reasons, Nor Ghazanchi prefect Ruslan Arustamian told Artsakh Press. After the war, in 2020, the village has come under direct enemy fire. The arable lands belonging to the community are also under the target of the enemy's combat positions, and it is not possible to approach these areas and cultivate the land. We have managed to sow a very small amount of barley, beech, and potatoes, and the problem lies in the fact that the stock will not be enough for the villagers during the winter, Arustamian said. The head of the Nor Ghazanchi village informed that due to the ongoing blockade of Artsakh by Azerbaijan, there is a shortage of diesel flour, vegetable oil and sugar in the village, but in case of dire need or to take patients urgently to medical facilities of capital Stepanaget, the regional administration provides the necessary diesel fuel. After the war, the number of livestock in Nor Ghazanchi reduced considerably. Residents are not engaged in farming as before. Everyone cultivates only the land near their home, Arustamian said, emphasizing, however, that the plague challenges do not prevent the starting of new families in the village. A few days ago, sporadic shots from small arms were fired from the Azerbaijani combat position towards Chankatakh and neighboring Kichan and Nor Ghazanchi villages of the Martaket region of Artsakh. As a result, several houses were damaged. Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports of the Republic of Armenia, Jana Andreasian, held a meeting with UNESCO's Deputy Director General for Cultural Affairs, Ernesto Oton, at UNESCO headquarters during her visit to France on June 28. The Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports of the Republic of Armenia provided information to Armen Press, stating that several cooperation matters were discussed during the meeting. According to the source, Minister Andreasian specifically addressed the destruction of Armenian culture cultural and religious heritage, as well as the distortion of identity by the authorities in Baku in Artsakh and the surrounding regions. One recent concern was Baku's plan to convert the Supambartsum church into a mosque. This statement further expressed deep concern about the lack of realization of cultural and basic human rights for the Armenian population in Artsakh due to the blockade of the Berzo Road by Baku. It emphasized that the blockade also violates the mobility of artists. In this regard, the importance of sending an independent UNESCO technical mission to the border regions of Nagorno-Karabakh and the Republic of Armenia was reiterated. Ernesto Oton highly appreciated UNESCO's cooperation with the Republic of Armenia, including its active participation and support in studying the cultural heritage of the region, conducting technical missions and highlighting its involvement in restoration work. The Repatriation and Integration Center under the Office of the Commissioner for Deported Armenians has been operating de facto in Armenia since June 1. Although its official opening is expected this month, the center has already received many applications from deported Armenians and repatriates. This was reported to Sputnik Armenia by the head of the Strategy Development Department of the Commissioner for Diaspora Affairs, Hovannes Alexanian. The main function of the center is to facilitate the process of repatriation of Armenians from around 
around the world. Employees work with citizens both on the spot and remotely. Discussions are underway to identify problems and improve the efficiency of the center. Thanks to this structure, it will be possible to collect accurate information about the number of repatriates. Among the most pressing issues are the placement of a child in kindergarten schools, health issue, the procedure of obtaining citizenship or a residence permit, the conditions for transporting personal cargo from another country to the Republic of Armenia. If necessary and if additional consultation is required, the center seeks assistance from government agencies. The specialist noted that the entire repatriation process is divided into three stages. The period before repatriation, repatriation and integration, which lasts from six months to two years. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Thank mm -hmm. you.